Welcome to the fifth and final part of Footprint. In part five, we're going to be looking at environmental management frameworks, EMFs for short. An EMF is a policy document that outlines how we realize the goals laid out in government policy or in a regional plan. But first, let's back up. Imagine you're on a road trip. You need a map, a destination, and the route that you're going to take to get there. Think of that as the regional plan, the subject of part three of this series. Regional plans provide directions and strategies for managing the environment given the pressures that humans put on it. And as we can see here, a lot of our needs as a society put a great deal of pressure on the one thing that's supporting all of it, the environment. But you need more than just a map. You also need an odometer to know how far you've gone and a speedometer to know whether you're going too fast or too slow. Think of the environmental management framework like those instruments. EMFs help to monitor trends and measure indicators to understand the state or condition of things like our air quality and our surface water quality and quantity, ensuring a strong environmental foundation. So, how do you create an EMF? So how do you create an EMF? First, you have to figure out what kind of goals we have for the region. We call that process setting regional objectives. And what better way to do this than through conversations with key groups that have strong connections to a specific region? Public consultation provides valuable insight that is used to inform regional plans and the final version of a framework. And what kind of things go into an EMF? What instruments are on that dashboard? Here are some really important terms to know. A limit is a boundary you don't want to pass. It's the level where the risk of an adverse effect on the environment starts becoming unacceptable. Triggers are like warnings for limits. It's an early warning signal so we can manage the situation proactively. So what do we do with this EMF full of all of this useful information about a region? The condition of indicators are measured regularly to help understand the condition of the environment. If a regional trigger or limit is exceeded, we use data and other information to help understand the cause or causes. There's investigation and a process to work collaboratively to determine the appropriate response. Let's dig into a hypothetical example. Say a region is monitored and assessed for an air quality indicator. Find particulate matter. Particulate matter is the general term we use for a mixture of solid particles and liquid droplets in the air. It includes things like aerosols, smoke, fumes, dust, ash, and pollen. The composition of particulate matter varies with place, season, and weather conditions. If monitoring for these particles indicates that a trigger or limit has been exceeded, we then need to understand why. Is it caused by natural circumstance, like a wildfire, or something else, like transportation? Once that's figured out, an investigation and collaborative process begins to help determine the appropriate management action to take, ensuring it supports the regional objectives. So if the culprit is transportation, that might mean, for example, that more education is needed on alternative modes of transportation. Lastly, the government of Alberta has a responsibility to communicate with the public under the frameworks. An annual report on ambient conditions of the environment including quality and state of the air and water, is published and made publicly available to Albertans online. There are also reports that provide information on the management response if there has been a trigger or limit exceeded. The investigation and collaborative process as described. So in short, EMFs are just a way to make sure that the changes in condition of our environment are identified, assessed, and responded to as necessary. Regional environmental objectives are achieved, and that healthy ecosystems are maintained in order to meet the economic, social, and environmental outcomes or goals. As we wrap up this series, you might be thinking, what can I do about it? And the answer is simple. For successful land and natural resource management to work, all of these plans and frameworks require the collective input and support of all Albertans, including Indigenous peoples in order to create plans and processes that take into account how people use or value the landscape. We need to hear from the people firsthand. 
we encourage you to get involved by participating in the conversation and learning more about how we can better manage our footprint. This video is the final part of a five-part series to help introduce, build awareness, and understanding for some land use and environmental management topics. We encourage you to learn more about how we can better manage our footprint by visiting the Government of Alberta website at www.alberta.ca. Thanks for watching.